Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Welcome to the ninth All Africa Business Leader Awards in partnership with CNBC Africa. As uh, our introduction so beautifully said, I'm Alexander Leipner. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Fifi Peters, and it is honestly so great to be with you once again. The All Africa Business Leader Awards started as an idea to celebrate and to recognize some of the incredible businesses and leaders on the continent on an annual basis. And it now gives me a great pleasure to invite onto stage the women behind not only the ABLA, but CNBC Africa, and also Forbes Africa on the continent. Please help me welcome onto the stage the Managing Director of the ABN Group, Ms. Roberta Naika. Our guest of honor, Premier David Makura, President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akanumi Adeshina, members of the ABN Board, the ABLA finalist, captains of industry, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. On behalf of the co-founder of the ABN Group and founder of the All Africa Business Leaders Awards, Mr. Rakesh Wai, it is indeed an honor and an absolute pleasure to welcome you to the ninth All Africa Business Leaders Awards. Tonight, we are here to celebrate the best in business and corporate leadership for Africa. And together, you collectively form the engine, powering the economy and taking Africa to the future. And as we connect together on this beautiful night in Santin Kauteng, which is Africa's richest square mile and the pulsating heart of business, especially in a year that South Africa celebrates 25 years of democracy, I cannot but reflect on the trials, the tribulations, and the triumphs of business and entrepreneurship that we have together witnessed this last decade. We are here to celebrate success. So I would like to thank, take this opportunity to congratulate all our finalists tonight I would also like to thank the judges led by Mr. Sam Bembe, who have put in many hours of meticulous research and rigorous vetting for a fair evaluation of the winners. Thank you to Alexander Leibner and the team from the ABN, ABN Productions for putting together this stellar evening. And I would like to end by expressing my gratitude to all the partners, to all the sponsors who have made tonight possible. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I present to you the ninth All Africa Business Leaders Awards. Thank you. Tonight's finale is hosted in Africa's economic powerhouse, uh, Gauteng, and South Africa here to open tonight's festivities. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Gauteng Premier David Makura to say a few words. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge uh, the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Adeshina and Mrs. Adeshina, the founder of the Ablas and the co-founder of the ABN Group, Mr. Rakesh Wahi and Mrs. Wahi, distinguished business leaders, who have joined us this evening from across the continent, members of the media, fellow Africans. Our continent pins its hope on you as business people, as the people who will carry the dream of our African renaissance. We celebrate you this evening as men and women who are creating opportunities where there were none before. You are driven, you are passionate, and indeed to ensure that we solve Africa's problems through economic development. 
you are connecting our continent through inter-Africa trade by improving transport and logistics and by improving exports into the different parts of our continent of products made in our own continent, made in Africa. As the Gauteng Provincial Government, we would continue to work with various African institutions to promote growth that is inclusive in our continent. And it is on this note that I welcome you once more to this place, this city, and this province. Let us join hands and make Africa the tree of life. And let us give the best we have to Africa. Asante sana. Thank you very much. We launch into tonight's lineup of awards with a brand new category for 2019. Although not often in the limelight, these men and women control their organization's financial futures as the captains of cash flow, the grandmasters of the grid, and the bosses of the balance sheets. Let me call up TAG's Chris Pilgrim and ABN's Mobile Hlongwane to help me hand over this award. And as we take a look at the finalists for the Chief Financial Officer of the Year, presented by Lancaster University, Ghana. The finalists for the CFO of the Year. Rai Sibe Morati, CFO, Nedbank. Andre Duplessis, CFO, Capitec Bank. Rhett Finch, CFO, King Prize Insurance. Natalie Paga, CFO, BK Group. And the Chief Financial Officer of the Year is Andre Duplessis. CFO Capitec Bank. No one thank you, please, Madame. Andre Duplessis joined Capitec Bank Group in the year 2000. As one of the founding members, he first held the position of financial manager to later being appointed as an executive director of Capitec. Today, he is the chief financial officer, guardian of the financial health of the organization. Um, thank you very much for the nomination. Um, it's really a great honor for me. I've learned over the last few years that if we do what God uh, destined us to do, then we not only enjoy it, but we actually get good at it as well. So thank you for God. I really also want to um, say thank you to all my present and past colleagues. Um, this accolade, I believe, is as much theirs as it's mine. So we've um, founded and started the bank in 2019. And I can assure you, it was very, very difficult. There was a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears, but a lot of fun as well. I just want to also just thank my family uh, for the support, especially for my wife of 30 years. And also thank you, Elsmi, that you joined me tonight on your birthday. Hopefully Aww. we'll sing for you tonight. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, just thank you. Um, all, all the other nominees and finalists and winners, it was really an honor to be in the same um, lineup as all these esteemed people. And I think everybody are winners tonight. I honor you and thank you very much. For our next category, the following finalists in our next category um, offer all of us, as I did say, a keyhole to the future. And they are breaking new ground, they're pioneering new ideas, disrupting industries, and changing the way that we do things. And to help us hand over this award, please may I call upon Kolo Kunene, who is the Human Resources Director at MasterCard Southern Africa, and ABN's Kudzai Kanyangaranga. We're very proud to uh, support innovation. It's 
in our DNA and we want to recognize those who are truly innovating in Africa and recognize the ingenuity and leadership of those who are driving societal change through innovation. So we're behind the award this year for the 2019 Innovator of the Year Award. We're very proud to be associated with them. The finalists for the Innovator of the Year. Eric Rutaisiri, founder, Charis Unmanned Aerial Solutions. Mark Washberger, founder, Capital Hotels and Apartments. Obi Ozo, co-founder, Kobo 360. And the winner of the Innovator of the Year Award is Obiora Ozo. Combo 360 is a technology company that aggregates end-to-end -end haulage operations to help cargo owners, truck owners, drivers and cargo recipients achieve an efficient supply chain framework. With only a click of a button on the mobile and web applications, cargo owners can simply request for any truck of their choice and have their goods picked up and delivered to the required location through an all-inclusive robust logistics ecosystem. Carbo 360 uses big data and technology to reduce logistics frictions while empowering drivers to earn more and helping manufacturers of all sizes to find new markets. Thank you once again CNBC Africa for uh, naming Kobo as the innovator of the year. Uh, we are very grateful for uh, how you have been helping to tell our story. Thank you very much to my co-founder Ife my family, the entire team at Kobo, and our investor base, it would not have been possible in disrupting the $150 billion global uh, Africa logistics uh, ecosystem without your support. They're under 35, and they're certainly punching above their weight. These youthful pioneers have taken the path less traveled to build notable businesses. To help us award this trophy, please may I call on stage Matili Kunene and Forbes Africa's Renuka Methel. The finalists for the Young Business Leader of the Year, Eric Rutai Sire. Founder, Sharis Unmanned Aerial Solutions. Alpha Nuri. Founder, JAMA Funding. Obi Ozo. Co-founder, Kobo360. And the young, all, the All Africa Young Business Leader of the Year is Obiora Ozor, the co-founder of Kobo360. I'm extremely honored to be receiving the Young Business Leader Award and grateful to CNBC for this recognition. I want to thank especially to uh, my co-founder, Ifeo Yodele, my family, the entire team at Kobo, and our investor for this support. I will continue to focus on building a world-class organization which will drive efficiency and affordability in the supply chain across Africa. So what is powerfully clear about the past recipients of the All Africa Business Leader Award is the strength of the women, not just of the businesses they have forged and led, but in many cases, the individual women's strength championed in the setbacks they faced in their journey to tonight's recognition. To help us hand over this award, please may I invite uh, to my podium Mduduzi Mbada, Head of Policy at the Office of the Premier of Gauteng and CNBC Africa's Chris Bishop. And while they make their way on stage, let's take a look at the exceptional lineup of women who are this year's finalists for the All Africa Businesswoman of the Year. The finalists for the Businesswoman of the Year. Putima Hanyele Dabengwa, CEO, Naspers. Peggy Sue Komalo. CEO of Wealth South Africa, Standard Bank. Natalie Mpaga, CFO, BK Group. The winner of the All Africa Businesswoman of the Year Award is Puti Mahanyeli Dabengwa. Puti Mahanyele Dabengwa is a businesswoman who has been at the helm of five different companies, 
She's currently the CEO of NASPIS South Africa and the only black woman leading a JSC-listed Top 40 company. She's an independent director of Vodacom, Goldfields, Discovery Insure and Calm Air Limited. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening, most of all, to our Premier. Thank you so much for this honour. I'm really, really grateful. I'm here with my mother-in-law, and I'm so glad that she got to see this. Um, but really... <laughs> She's 89 now, and it's, it's wonderful <laughs> to share these memories with her. <laughs> um, but um, I'm truly, truly grateful. Most of all, I'm grateful for the women that have come before me. Um, I, you know, I saw Sis Wendy Luhabe earlier on, and truly to be able to have women like her to look up to is something that is so phenomenal. I was sitting speaking to Nomkita about how she doesn't change. She still looks exactly the same, you know, um, and ever so sharp as usual. Um, but, you know, I'm really, really grateful to, to everyone in the room. Um, most of all, I'm so grateful to, you know, the, the whole organization, CNBC, uh, Forbes magazine, I'm sitting there with Methyl. Um, and, you know, thank you so much for this wonderful event. Um, I, honestly, I, I have a few words to share. Um, but mostly I wanted to just say to you, Alexandra, um, earlier on when you spoke about the fourth industrial revolution, that is something that is just so important. Um, and, you know, I'm so glad that as a business that that is something that has really grown us very fast. And today we serve one and a half billion people around the world every day. Um, and, you know, we also, one of the things that we've done is to have a fund that is investing in local talent that can be looking at creating these internet-based businesses. But I'm really thankful. Thank you so much, Rakesh. Thank you so much. Um, and have a good evening, everyone. Well, an entrepreneur is a person with great innovating ideas that identifies the need for the creation of a business to fill a void. Their characteristics are creativity, imagination, and a thirst for work. And to help us recognize this worthy individual, please may I call upon a woman who does not age, who remains ever beautiful and graceful. We've just heard her being introduced slightly by um, Ms. Puti Dabengwa, but we miss Wendy Luhabe and also Thasami Soraya. May I please welcome you on the stage whilst they make their way up. Let's take a look at the finalists in their category. Finalists for the Abla Entrepreneur 2019. Dirk van der Walt, co-founder, We Buy Cars. Fun van der Walt, co-founder, We Buy Cars. Gideon Galloway, Executive CEO, King Price Insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to announce the All Africa Entrepreneur for 2019, Dirk van der Walt and Fan van der Walt, founders of We Buy Cars. We Buy Cars was founded by brothers Fun and Dirk van der Walt in 2001. WeBuyCars.co.za offers private car sellers the ability to do so through a three-step online procedure. It offers expert sales advice and secure transactions. The company comes to a location suitable to the seller, making sales safe and convenient. Both Fun and Dirk van der Walt have pioneered a new way of doing business, embracing a new era of technology, igniting a whole new business model, having invested their own time and money to grow We Buy Cars organically. Currently, the business employs 980 staff with more than 129 buyers, 28 branches and buying pods around the country with more than 200 drivers who pick up cars daily and deliver them all over South Africa. In a single month, the company trades roughly 6,000 cars. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, 
this is truly a great honor and a privilege. My heart is beating out of my chest right <laughs> now. Um, yeah, firstly, uh, thanks to Abla and uh, CNBC Africa um, for honoring us tonight. Um, and then to my wife, Tanya, uh, my wife of 20 years, who's here with me tonight. Um, she's always there supporting me. Thank you for, for always be, being there for me. Um, People sometimes ask me to tell them about the vision and the plan we had when we started We Buy Cars. Um, but the truth is, we never really had a plan. Back in 2001, my brother Dirk and I started this business because we just wanted to improve our own situation and we really enjoyed dealing in cars. Um, I guess the essence of being an entrepreneur is to always be somewhat uncomfortable and dissatisfied with uh, the status quo. And uh, we, we worked on our business and we enjoyed the wins and we learned from our mistakes over the years. And, and we surrounded ourselves with like-minded people with a drive and a passion. Um, and tonight I, I want to dedicate this award to those people who joined our family nearly a thousand people right now because without them this would not have been possible and uh, last but most importantly I want to recognize God and uh, the talents and mm -hmm. uh, the blessings he, he gave us to do, to do this. Thank you. Now each of the winners of this next category in years gone by set an overwhelming standard of excellence one that each of tonight's finalists matched with their very own achievements. It's a big trophy to carry, so I'm going to need some help. I'm pretty strong, um, but I will need some help still. Can I please call upon Glenn Marcus and Mokhopodi Mokwena to help me uh, give away this very big trophy while they make their way on stage. Here are this year's finalists for the All Africa Business Leader of the Year presented by the Khao Train. I think Khao Train is an uh, is example of excellence, of saying we're going to do something, we've built a train system which is compatible to, uh, to anything in the world. We're running at a, at a availability and a affordable, uh, availability and a punctuality which is similar to, to other trains. So we feel, you know, this is a service excellence award, this is a all Africa um, business leadership award and I think it's something that we love to be associated with. The finalists for the business leader of the year Gideon Galloway, CEO, King Price Insurance. Anton Ossip, CEO, Discovery Insure, Discovery Limited. Ntetonyati is the Group Chief Executive of Altron. of the 2019 All Africa Business Leader of the Year is Mr. Mteto Nyati, CEO of Altra. Mteto Nyati is the CEO of Altran. He's held senior leadership and executive roles in multinational IT companies such as MTNSA, IBM and Microsoft. Under Nyati's leadership, Altron has strengthened its governance structures and delivered on its strategic commitments. In the past financial year, Altron has won key business deals in the public sector, acquiring a business in the UK as well as a strategic partnership with Ireland-based Tango Telecoms and one business with Verifone. Uh, well. I honestly don't know what to say, but uh, I want to say thank you so much to, uh, to Abla uh, and also to the judges uh, for this kind of a recognition. It's, it's truly, truly an honor uh, to be standing up here. And when I look at the other finalists that were there with me, uh, I know that they are not up here. Uh, they could have well have been up here when I look at the quality of the people that were there with me. So I'd like to congratulate them as well for being a great, great leaders in our country. 
I also like to, to thank, uh, you know, it's, it's, we always get as leaders uh, all of this recognition, uh, but at the end of the day, the people who are making a difference uh, is all of the 8,500 employees of Altron out there. Uh, they are the ones that uh, every day they wake up to want to make a difference. They wake up to go out there and serve our customers uh, throughout the world. So I really would like to thank them for, for helping us, for helping me to be standing up and representing them. We, we often also, as, as leaders, we say that we, we are self-made. Uh, I never believe that. I never believe that is true. Uh, in my case, there are many, many people that have helped me along the way. Uh, and those mentors, they know who they are. Uh, I would like to thank them. Uh, they've helped me to take this challenge about uh, three and a half years ago, this challenge of, of taking a, a company like Altron a company that was going through very, very difficult times. Uh, we could have ended up with a situation where we, we had uh, to lose 8,500 employees and close the business. Uh, I decided to take the challenge largely because of the guidance and the, and the push for some of those people. Uh, I want to thank them uh, for, for, for helping me to, to decide to take this challenge. Uh, why did I take this kind of a challenge? You know, Altron is a company that is 54 years old. It's an old company. It's a, a company that was founded by an Afrikaner, a largely an Afrikaner organization. But why I took it is because I really wanted to come and create an inclusive company, a company that is reflecting all of the people of this country. A company where when we're going in there and we look at it, it becomes kind of the microcosm of the South Africa that we'd like to live in. A South Africa where we'd like to see our children living in, where everybody has got an opportunity to be their best. This is what this company is offering me. So I really like to thank the people of Altron for helping me to be in this position. Thank you so much. Every year, the ABLA assembles some of the continent's most distinguished academic, business and media minds to carefully sift through hundreds of applications and aided by SNG Grant Thornton and Lancaster University Ghana, vigilantly select those few names worthy to be engraved on the ABLA trophy. The 2019 All Africa Business Leaders Awards judges are Anthea Gardner, Founder and Managing Partner, Cartesian Capital. Dr. Snowy Kaza, Executive Chairperson of Biggin Africa. Renuka Methel, Managing Editor, Forbes Africa and Forbes Women Africa. Bismarck Rewane, Managing Director and Chief Executive of Financial Derivatives Company. Dr. Karai Shatima, Senior Lecturer, Pearson Institute, Monique Venek, News Editor, CNBC Africa, Carmen Nibijira, Project Director, Haworth HTL, and Head Judge, Sam Bembe, Non-Executive Director, ABN Group. Thank you to the ABLA 2019 judges and partners now, Choppy's current staggering business model features sophisticated supply chain management and aggressive cost-cutting methods. And over the past 33 years, Choppy's has grown as a home brand in Botswana and spread its wings into many other African countries, becoming a significant retailer in the sub-Saharan African market. This business model has profoundly altered the living patterns of local, public, uh, retail, and wholesale trading equations, as well as the logistics of the transportation and distribution of goods. Now, this model also helped the company win Botswana Presidential Award for Best Social Serving Company in 2015. And today, they are the presenting partner for the All Africa Philanthropist of the Year. Now, the All Africa Business Leader Awards doesn't only recognize those who have amassed great success and fortunes, but also those who have chosen to give back in significant ways. In the words of John D. Rockefeller, think of giving not only as a duty, but as a privilege. 
Here to award this unrivaled recognition of All Africa Philanthropist of the Year, please welcome on stage Head of HR for Choppy's Enterprise, Topo Matlape and Mrs. Makura, and also Mrs. Saloni Wahi. Tony Elumelu is a Nigerian economist, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. He is the chairman of Ayers Holdings, the United Bank for Africa, Transcorp, and founder of the Tony Elumelu Foundation. He founded the Tony Elumelu Foundation, focused on empowering African entrepreneurs. The foundation has recently partnered with the UNDP and aims to generate millions of new jobs and contribute at least $10 billion in new annual revenues across Africa. What we wanted to do was to democratize luck. We're not targeting any sector. We just want people who believe in themselves. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm here on behalf of the founder of the Tony Elimelo Foundation to accept this honor and this award. My name is Ife Ngao Gochuku, and I'm the chief executive officer of the Tony Elimelo Foundation. Mm. I just want to say that this award is dedicated to the hundreds of thousands of young African entrepreneurs who apply to the Tony Elimelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program every year. They are the true heroes of our continent. Every year, hundreds of thousands of them apply. They come, some of them, with nothing but a hope, a dream, and a drive a dream to translate their business ideas into reality, a hope for a foot in the door to start the entrepreneurial journey, and a drive to succeed against all odds, sometimes in the most difficult business terrain, because we know that if you can succeed as an entrepreneur in Africa, you can succeed anywhere. And so, this is for you, African entrepreneurs. For the first time this year, the ABLA looks to celebrate those organizations whose primary home isn't Africa, but offshore, yet whose products and services have found their way into the hearts and minds of the continent. They operate in one or more countries in Africa and have shown to be both an international brand, but firmly invested in the region. Now to hand over this award, please join me on stage, Sam Bembe and Dan Atkins uh, at my podium. And let's take a look at the finalists for All Africa Global Company of the Year. The finalists for the Company of the Year Global MasterCard Google Siemens Winner of the Global Company of the Year is MasterCard Good evening, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen um, so as you would expect me probably to say, this is truly a priceless experience. Um, I, um, we're on, on behalf of the colleagues um, in MasterCard, um, it's, uh, it's a real recognition of the hard work um, that we are bringing to the continent. Um, Africa, with the advent of uh, technology, the advances that are being made at the moment, presents a huge opportunity to generate unique solutions which can be exported probably globally. Um, the innovation that we're seeing is allowing us to invest heavily across a number of countries. Um, we've gone into new sectors such as energy, schools, agriculture, um, and trying to solve customer pain points um, in terms of um, financial inclusion and other areas. We see huge opportunity to further invest in our businesses, but while we're a global company, we also recognize that we really need to think local. Um, and that's really our approach. And, and we really hope that we can reach more communities and drive further financial inclusion across Africa in that journey. Thank you very much for this wonderful award. It truly is a great recognition um, of the work. And on behalf of all the employees at MasterCard, thank you, thank you very much. This has been another challenging year for business and tonight's category finalists are brands that have impacted many of us in the room. They've rem or reminded us rather that Africa is a continent of opportunity against all odds. And to help us hand over this award, may I please call back on stage Ms. Roberta Naika and Mr. Jeff Greener. 
And as they make their way on stage, here are the finalists of the All Africa African Company of the Year Award. Finalists for the Company of the Year Nedbank Group, Flower Mills of Nigeria, Access Bank. Twenty nineteen All Africa Company of the Year is NetBank. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am humbled, and we are humbled as NetBank. Uh, thanks to the sponsors, thanks to the organizers of this uh, wonderful event, and thanks for the recognition and for the opportunity to really put us on the map that we already belong to, which is the African map. Um, on behalf of my board and my board chairman, Vasi Naidu, and my CEO, uh, Mike Brown, I'm pretty sure that they will be surprised, wonderfully surprised, and very thankful and grateful for this uh, opportunity. On behalf of the 32,000 uh, 32, people who work for NetBank, we're really privileged uh, for this honor. This is truly a special year for us. This is the year that we have celebrated our 50 years of being listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And, and we are an organization that has been deeply rooted in this country for 188 years. Um, as NetBank Premier, we have heard you when you talk about African problems. However, to us, these are opportunities, and we continue to look at ways in which we can be a solution as opposed to looking at this as uh, challenges. And with our one trillion rands balance sheet, mm. we believe that we have the firepower, we have the capacity to continue to build Africa for what it should be and for the nations across our 54 countries in the continent to continue to do better and to reach for their dreams and aspirations. And for many people who are sitting in this room today, I see a lot of people who are our clients, who are our partners, who are our suppliers, who are friends in many different ways. And as they say, as an African, in an African way, that if you want to walk fast, walk alone, and if you want to walk far, walk together. And we work with all of you around this room, and we really thank you. We are very grateful for this opportunity and our award. Thank you. Over the years, the ABLA has shared the stage to award worthy individuals, and tonight we recognize the African of the Year, someone who has placed Africa on the world map and has shown bold leadership and has been a torchbearer for the continent. This individual is globally recognized, locally respected, uh, the individual can come from sports or science or entertainment, business or politics, and this individual will grace the cover of Forbes Africa magazine accordingly. It is an uncontested category, so may I please call upon stage Andrew McLachlan, the Senior Vice President for Development uh, for the Sub-Saharan Africa at Radisson Hotel Group, and Mr. Rakesh Wahi, co-founder of the ABN Group, as well as the Gauteng Premier, Mr. David Makura, to reveal this year's deserving winner. The Radisson Hotel Group is one of the largest and most dynamic hotel companies in the world. We have seven distinctive brands and more than 1,400 hotels worldwide. We've been doing business in Africa for almost 20 years and we've grown our portfolio to almost 100 hotels in 32 countries. We're a firm believer in the people and the vast opportunities in Africa. Um, doing business in Africa, we really want to make every moment matter by being a true host and the best business partner to all our stakeholders. Africa has produced some of the best world leaders in politics, business and sports and, and innovation. And for the Radisson Hotel to, Group to recognize one of Africa's leaders is, is very important. We recognize how that person is going to shape the future of the African continent. We would like to acknowledge every nominee that's been recognized this evening for the contribution that they've been able to make to the African continent in their own unique way as they shape the future of this great continent. And the 2019 All-Africa African of the Year is 
Dr. Akinumi Adeshina. That is the president of the African Development Bank. Dr. Akinumi Adeshina is the president of the African Development Bank. Under his leadership, embarked on its boldest promotion drive for Africa's growth yet, the African Investment Forum. Only two years in, this initiative has opened up billions of dollars of investment into the continent. African visionary, his distinct energy, drive, foresight, and not to forget signature fashion sense, make him a proud son of Africa and worthy of this year's African of the Year accolade. I actually leave, came out of poverty, so poverty for me was not a theoretical concept. Um, I saw that. And I remember when I had to go to high school, my father also sent me to a village school. And by that time, you know, uh, uh, when I was in the village school, I asked my father. And my father, I remember telling me, he said, look, I want you to go to a village school because you never know what God will make you in life. When you see the reality of poverty, if God ever makes you somebody important in life, you will know exactly what to do. Well, good evening, everybody. Premier of Houting Province, David Makura and his dear wife, Mfo, the founder of ABN, and the All Africa Business Leaders Award, CNBC Africa, in Forbes Africa, Rakesh Wahi and his lovely wife, Saloni, members of the ABN board, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. What a huge honor it is for me and grace to be standing here tonight to be recognized as an Afri the African of the Year for 2019. I would like to thank the All African Business Leaders Awards Judges Committee for selecting me for this incredible award. I'd also like to thank ABN Group, CNBC Africa, and its chairman Rakesh Wahi and the Forbes Africa for their recognition. Honestly, to be named African of the Year is humbling and inspiring for me at the same time. To be selected in particular to follow last year's recipient, President Paul Kagame, is indeed a great honor. Mm -hmm. I give all glory to God for granting me grace and helping me each and every day. For without God, I will not be here. I have faith in Africa. I work for Africa. My goal every day is to make things better for Africa. I'm grateful for the mark of confidence reposed in me and the heavy responsibility I carry for our continent and your appreciation of the work that I am doing and the efforts that we are making collectively. But I do not walk alone. I am inspired by the people of the continent. And I am privileged and honored to lead the African Development Bank, Africa's premier development institution. My heartbeat is to serve the people of Africa daily with all my God-given ability. I am an eternal optimist on Africa. And there's every reason to be optimistic. Africa's economies are posting growth rates that are amazing. And just today, right here in Pretoria, the donors of the Bank Group's African Development Fund, which is the window that we use to support low-income countries and fragile states, pledged a whopping $7.6 billion to support these fragile states. This amount will go a long way to allow us to, faster, to move faster and to have inclusive growth on our continent. And as you have heard, Last month, right here in this place, actually right here in the Santin, Santin Center, we held the African Investment Forum. Many of you are here. The mayor was, I mean, the premier was here. He hosted us and his lovely wife. And there deals worth $40.1 billion were signed in less than, with interest in less than 72 hours. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa is buzzing. Africa is working. Welcome to a new Africa brimming with renewed hope, confidence, and optimism. The African Development Bank, which I have the honor of leading, will continue to fast-track Africa's development. 
There's still lots to do, don't get me wrong. The mountains may be high and the valleys may be deep, but yet we will not relent. I personally will not rest until Africa achieves faster development, until we achieve universal access to electricity, until Africa feeds itself and ends hunger malnutrition, until every child gets an opportunity to go to school and get good education, until we end unequal access of women to finance in Africa, until Africa shines brighter with hundreds of millions of its people living much improved lives. That's my responsibility that you've given me. That's my task. That's my mission. So on behalf of the people of Africa, I would like to say a great thank you for this uh, great recognition. I wish to thank my very hardworking staff at the African Development Bank, our board of directors, and the board of governors of the bank, and a very lovely wife I have here tonight. We've been married for the last 35 years. <laughs> and Grace's love, wise counsel, prayers, and support has been my rock every single day of those 35 years. I would like, therefore, to dedicate this recognition to the people of Africa who inspire me daily. Work for Africa continues tomorrow. Thank you again, and God bless you all. Tonight's commendable recipient went from humble beginnings to creating some of the most beloved childhood memories and iconic restaurant brands. With a career spanning over half a century, his dream to be his own boss led to the creation of dining establishments across the world that would entertain families and satisfy taste buds. There's possibly not one person in the room and watching us tonight who has not experienced one of these eateries, some more than once. Call him a visionary or a living legend, he has triumphed despite setbacks and changed the landscape of an industry. From such household names like the Cheddar Melt to the Salad Valley, ladies and gentlemen, let's roll the tape and see the man that gave us a taste for life and the winner of the 2019 All Africa Lifetime Achievement Award. From humble beginnings over 50 years ago, Alan Umbo opened the first ever Spur Steak Ranch. After a handful of successful openings in the Cape Town area, Umbo decided that franchising was the best option to grow the Spur business. Under his guidance, Spur was the first restaurant to specifically cater for children by providing a play area as well as design Spur's unique decor. Umbo retired in 2019, having invested into the South African restaurant industry for over five decades. Spur has grown into a legendary and internationally recognized brand with close to 600 outlets worldwide, which collectively employ over 15,000 people. His advice to other entrepreneurs is simple. Do what you enjoy and do it well. Demand good work, but never forget to respect yourself, your colleagues and your work. Be humble and help as many people as possible on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the 2019 All Africa Lifetime Achievement Award, Mr. Alan Amber, founder of Spur Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind applause and your warm recognition of what these people say I've done. <laughs> uh, fortunately, you can trust them. And um, the story began a long time ago. I know that you're tired and you want to go, so I'm just going to tell you a very quick bedtime story, if I may. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that I was very frustrated trying to work for other people. And my dad told me I wasn't studying hard enough, so I told him I'd pay for my own university, which I did by working in a steakhouse, one of the first in Johannesburg. I started at the age of 18, and I loved it. I loved the people, I loved the pressure, I loved showing that I was good at it, you know, a bit of a show off, sorry. <laughs> but 
it was just such a stimulating environment for me. And over the four years that I studied, I eventually formulated a dream because I wanted to be my own boss. And that dream was concreted into reality when after two and a half years of driving backwards and forwards in a little mini to Cape Town, I finally found premises. I waited one and a half years for them to be built, teaching soccer at Bramley Primary down the, the road, working in a deli with my good friend Errol Saxstein over there, who, by the way, has been married 55 years. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I, I hope you've got an award for him and Julian, his wife. I think there's one spare over there, maybe. <laughs> You know, I became a bit of a, a guy who can't sleep. And you know what it is when you, when you can't sleep? What is the name for a person who can't sleep? An insomniac. The great thing for a person like my, myself as being an insomniac is that there are only two more sleeps to Christmas. Isn't that great? <laughs> so I'm very fortunate there. I was lucky enough to open the business because the man who was building the building who gave me premises, <coughs> excuse me, took a liking to me, took me home, introduced me to his wife, and the family liked me, and it was on that basis, because I'd been traveling backwards and forwards, and they, they felt my zeal and my enthusiasm that I was able to get the lease. When I opened, nine people who were meant to come down to help me who were trained, grillers and bakers and sauce makers, nobody pitched up. They said they were very busy, sorry, and they had illness with one of their two people, but that isn't business-like. And that taught me how to assemble everything, just because I had to, and if I didn't, I'd have failed. And I started franchising myself, and I had the help of really dedicated, enthusiastic, young people who loved the same environment that I loved. And so the group grew. And it's been a wonderful, exciting ride. Uh, I might be a bit of a medalla, but I think I've got a few more miles on the clock. The one thing that I want to say, and there are two things that I want to say. The one thing I want to say is, The one thing I want to say is that, and it has crossed this company tonight that has been mentioned, is that global warming is real. I nearly burst into tears a few nights ago when I saw on BBC, and this is the truth, that the Victoria Falls had stopped falling. The smoke that thunders, I think it's a Matabili word, it might be Shona, please excuse me if I'm inaccurate, had stopped. In, Zim in Zambia at the moment, the animals are dying, and their tourist trade is decimated, and that's what runs the country in the main, in terms of employment, in terms of the whole gamut of the commercial world. So that's that side. The other side is some little story that I've got to tell you, and that my wife and I went to the City of Cape Town Orchestra the other evening, and there under the seat was a snail. Now that snail had to traverse cement cladding outside the city hall and had to come down the marble halls 300 meters to come take a left and go over the carpet to end up under that seat. <laughs> now, boy, is that nature or is that not nature? Is that not drive? Is that not goal setting? Well, I hope I didn't disappoint him. I put him in a pot plant outside. I thought he was so courageous. So, ladies and gentlemen, as far as Africa is concerned, <laughs> as far as Africa is concerned, <laughs> Africa, your time is now. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And thanks for helping me with the room. Great to have you here. Thank Cheers. you so much. Cheers.
Fifi, certainly the most lively Lifetime Achievement Award I've ever seen on this stage. Thank you, Alan Amber, the man who brought us Spur, Panerottis, John Dorries, Rocker Mamas, Casabella. I think I've named them all. Is there more? There's another one. Yeah, I mean, they usually say that, you know, um, you are your brand many a times. Absolutely. And I finally understand the tagline, people with a taste for life, because that man. There you have it. <laughs>